As the countdown to Bell Tour 299 ticks away, less than two weeks out, I travel to Dublin, Ireland to meet an undefeated top prospect, Kenny the Black Diamond Makamwana, who will compete in a featherweight clash against another undefeated prospect, Josh O'Connor from Wales. Kenny enters this bout with an unblemished professional record of 5-0. In his corner stands the prestigious SBG Ireland Gym, renowned for its world-class coaches and teammates. The SBG headquarters is where legends are born, and it's here that Kenny Makamwana refines his skills, surrounded by the expertise of elite coaches and the camaraderie of battle-hardened teammates. It's a sanctuary where pressure is transformed into diamonds, and champions are forged in the crucible of dedication and hard work. Supposed to look, supposed to come in here, again for the class. Twenty minutes. <laughs> Twenty minutes before, yeah. <laughs> you sometimes I just rush on, obviously, but. And um, we we'll get warm, obviously you see what boys are getting doing, they're getting warm on the mats there, getting stretched, getting the body loose, and then um, get start the session, start kickboxing session today, is, uh, kickboxing, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. Yeah, so like obviously now the, it'll be the last few hard spars and things like that, and then you kind of taper down and just go over what you would do in the fight, but nothing that's got to be too hard on the body type of thing, you know what I mean? So you're your best like you won by TK or just like through elbow. Elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was nasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think I hit him that hard. But <laughs> I was literally just trying to get back up. I was like, let me get back up. I was like, oh shit, his eyes were like, yeah. and it's always real. Yeah. Church shot. Church shot. You won. I'm I'm bringing in guys. So guys, now just trigger back. Kenny chose a kick. He chose a kick this side. He chose a body kick this side. He chose a body kick this side. Hey guys, who is Kenny Makamwana? Um, I'm just a, just a regular guy. I'm Kenny Makamwana. I'm Kenny the Black Diamond Makamwana in here. Um. Uh, just a regular guy from Dublin. I live in Blanchetown. Uh, I'm training out of SBG. I'm 26 years old, and um, yeah, I'm just a guy chasing the dream. Like yeah, I used to I used to work in um, nine to five in in a um, home store or more. Um, one day I just decided, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Let me just pursue. See if I can ask, give this, put my all into this, put, um, yeah, and, and try and make a career out of this, yeah. And here I am now. Yeah, like professional, 5-0. and o. Um, So I know we did a collaboration two years ago on a project. Um, it was Cage Conflict, you were fighting. Yeah. yeah, and you got the sub quite quickly. Yeah. Since then, you've progressed. You're now, um, you fought in Bellator twice, last twice, September yeah. and February, was it? Yeah. Uh, so, and again... From what I seen and you know I was watching, it seemed like two pretty. It looked easy for you, <laughs> if yeah. you don't mind me saying. But um, can you talk to me a little bit about um, moving? What it's like being a, being a professional compared to being an amateur, um, and how how have you kind of found that experience? Yeah, amateur is like just the place. Just you you want to win an amateur when you're an amateur fighter. Obviously, your fights. That's I see a lot of the people, the amateurs in the club, like this, the amateur game is their life. Their goal is to be the best amateur in the country. So, um, yeah, being an amateur, it's your place to just make all the mistakes under the lights and in front of like people shouting at you in the crowd and, and dealing with that. And then obviously when you get to an experience level um, where you're fighting to a professional level, um, that's the time to make the jump and then um, yeah a lot of things come with that learning how to weight cut learning how to um, adapt in, in, under pressure and um, learn how to deal with the lights and being relaxed under the lights yeah and then professional obviously it's a bit different obviously you can't just fight every week like the way um, you can in um, <laughs> amateur 
well you can but it's not as smart to do it you see the the top guys you, you were saying earlier we were having a conversation earlier about Sean O'Malley and how how strategically he uh, managed his career to get to the title and um, he done it at the right time he didn't take fight, stupid fights at the wrong time that's not saying he couldn't have won them fights but from a strategical point he was putting himself in the best position possible to um, in the long run to get to where he needed to get to yeah, I was thinking, and I always hear this a lot, fighters can grow exponentially within a six-month period. Yeah. So, like, the difference between taking that fight just one step early or just leaving it the, that one, maybe one fight later, like, just that balance of going up in competition seems to make a big difference. Like, what's it like training here in SBG? I mean, being in Dublin um, and kind of having coaches um, of this caliber, a uh, gym of this caliber... He repairs uh, high caliber. I know I saw some epic, uh, really talented guys out in the this morning training. Yeah. So, do you want to just talk a little bit about what's it like being a part of this uh, the family and SBG? You were saying like my coaches, the difference between the six month gap and jumping in people, and it's it's not like someone learning uh, flying, spinning hook kick or something like that like it's like, my stuff. yeah it's like just the, the difference between you winning a fight would be keeping your hand here and here like just to defend the punch mm. or getting your getting your head away getting your head this off center line or something something so small like that that can tweak that would make it f- a, like a hard fight look so so easy and um i feel like in my previous fights in bellator and that um it's the little tiny things that are making the fights finish so early as well and obviously um with the team that i'm on we have people in the ufc obviously conor mcgregor what he's doing everyone everyone's everyone knows what he's doing it's um it's mind-blowing especially um in, in ireland like um there's not people not much people have done what he's done if if any and that the money he's made and he's shown that 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 that's possible when um a lot of people didn't believe but now now a lot of people are uh, believing them um, and not just that obviously there's Bragatona he just won the tough um we've got amateur world champions um and yeah it's obviously being around that um you want it's obviously inspiring for um, someone like me coming up or someone seeing me knock someone out on Bellator, someone in the amateur teams, they're going to, like, it's not like maybe, it's like there's definitely going to be more amateurs, um, like, from SBG coming up and being on Bellator, being on the UFC. So, um, yeah, it's exciting and it's inspiring. I feel like we all get a boost off each other, seeing each other's success. And, um, yeah, like, um, may long it continue here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think with someone like, because clearly from what I've seen, like you have um, natural ability uh, physically, mentally, but also that you're open and deep learning. And then I guess like having someone like, you know, John or John Kavanaugh or uh, Coach Roach or like they've been at the highest level. I mean, McGregor changed the game. Like, yeah. His mindset and having that wisdom from those experiences. And now you're also benefiting from that like yeah and you're talking about these inches mm. it's interesting i've never heard i've never been close enough to hear about that and i always hear about exponential growth in short periods in mma but but now it makes sense i actually watched um gsp and miss bing lord a and that uh, he just like it was just an inch he ducks mm. and then left hook and a it's yeah like, like that is insane and even in slow motion it looks it looks like it's look but that's from even someone trying to jab like this and and then dave's telling you dave or john is telling you get your head off the center that's the difference between you getting knocked out and you staying here and 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 winning the fight off off uh off missing the punch you know what i mean yeah so, yeah yeah that all comes from drilling but when and it's in the fight and you're like oh that nearly got him but it looks like look but when he's drilling on the pads, he's getting out of the way on purpose because he knows that someone's supposed to punch in this direction, like naturally, you know. Yeah, yeah, and just putting the irons in, and yeah. it becomes, becomes like you take that on the floor. It comes a natural instinct because yeah. obviously, doing when you see a punch coming at you, you're, most people that don't know how the fight are gonna be like this. But when you when someone's seeing the punch coming at them and they're like doing that, that's that's not a normal movement from someone throwing it a knockout punch at you, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs>
Yeah, you just come back. Yeah, we should, yeah, your breathing goes down. It's all good. He's late. I'm just nosy. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens over here? Up here, uh, we sometimes grappling, sometimes just different battles. When the when the gym's busy, there's a class down here, a class in the cage, another class in there, class in here. So sometimes the beginners will appear, the pros will be downstairs, like uh, vice versa. Look at this. Look at this, Dallas. This guy is the best steak guy in Ireland. He's the head chef of Fire Resto. Where is that? He's giving me his contact for steaks. So you're going to yeah. I know when it was said, why do why you never do this when I'm not in camp? <laughs> you know it's the problem thing. You know? Yeah, man. <laughs> These man, see, you always forcing me into things. <laughs> if it's not the gi, it's to get a barbecue. <laughs> what, yeah, what I'm, when I'm in the middle of camp, like. <laughs> he went around at the minute and he's shown and sparred. And uh, I think he'll show that in the fight. I think, I think he can beat the guy everywhere, you know? So it's just, it's just a... Uh, like he's five and all now, so it's like, do you know? Well, the last five, he's, was, he's had to win his last five fights. Four win the fourth round, is it? Yeah. And one win the second, so I believe this is going to be something similar. But we're prepared to go with the three rounds, you know? But he's more ready. I mean, there's no magic. So, you, you know, if Kenny gets like one or two things off in a fight, to me that's a big deal, because it means there's improvements. So. Let's say he makes improvements every fight, but the end of the year or the end of 18 months after three fights, he's made big improvements. So I say to Kenny, like if he if he fought himself 18 months ago, he'd beat himself. So that's the that's the goal. Just you know, it was very satisfying. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Yeah. Well, I watched an interview recently you did with MMA UK. Yeah. So your upcoming fight, Bellator 299, September 23rd. Um, you're fighting Josh O'Connor, who's also unbeaten. Yeah. Um, and these are both like, I guess, hot prospects in the game. Uh, so I heard you say that you're going to school him. Yeah. I guess that's the attitude you kind of need to have, and I, I guess he should have that attitude if he wants to be the best as well. Yeah. So, uh, you're going to school him, but you also said that, uh, the people need to start putting respect on Kenny's uh, name or your name. So uh, you just want to kind of expand upon those comments and let us know your mindset going into this fight on yeah, the like, my, like my bosses know, and Scott Scott Coker and Jude Jude Samuel, they 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 know what I want. They they I feel like um, obviously I'm I'm delighted to be in the position I'm in. Um, it's a it's a great opportunity for anyone um five fights into their professional career. But at the same time, I know what I bring to this show. Um, no, I feel like I don't know if there's anyone in the country that's five and zero and has finished every single one of their fights. So um, I like obviously everyone. We all think we're the best, but I've been proven. I've been doing things that no one have, has done in in the country. So um, yeah, I feel like that needs to be uh comp compensated a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, I. Like after I beat a five and zero guy, a five and zero guy like myself, I feel like there's no there's no excuses no more. Like you know what I mean. But that being said, respect to respect to Bellator, respect to Josh. But um, yeah, I'm I am gonna school them. And yeah, and um, so and then Bell, I'm working with Bellator. Uh, I think you're saying you have two fights left on your contract. Yeah. So I, I guess that that does take up part of the, your headspace now. So not only do you have training, recovery, nutrition. But you do have that business side, so do you take care of most of that, or do you have someone who helps with negotiations and stuff? Yeah, so I don't have I don't have a manage, management at the moment. I used to have I used to be with a management that shall not be named. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know, you can do you can do your background checks uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. But uh, yeah, but um, I'm not with management. I just let. Um, I just listened to Dave and uh, um, and John for the moment. Yeah, I'm already in a multi void contract with Bellator, so um, yeah. yeah, I'll get this out of the way, and the wins will take care of themselves. I feel like the wins will speak speak a, a lot to to my next um, contract if I stay, if I don't stay, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're five and all in your pro career, but I was thinking you've had a long amateur career before that. Yeah. So do you want to just kind of tell us about like? What the journey you've been on from what you were saying, like PE halls and gyms, yeah. they know at this arena. Yeah. So what's 
What's the journey been like? Do you want to describe a little? Yeah, obviously, yeah, I started fighting um, probably about 10 years ago. I started in, yeah, obviously, everyone, uh, amateur level, you're going to fight in the local PE halls anyway. It's cheap to rent for the promoter. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, PE halls, um, gay, gay calls, whatever, <laughs> hotels, and uh, the, la the last time I was, I wasn't in an arena, it was, um, it was outdoors. <laughs> So um, yeah, obviously you see we're in the street arena here now, um, yeah. So hopefully I don't have to go back to the to the PE halls and then that. But uh, it's good. It's good to see how far I've moved. So is it see like going through the journey of being in these like little weird smelly places? Yeah. Where, like, everyone's kind of lumped into one place. It's I guess it helps the journey. It helps move character, build mental yeah. strength, and it gives you the full kind of. Gives you the full spectrum of what it's all about, I guess. Yeah, 100%. You don't really, you don't really think about it. You just think, oh, there's a cage, the rest to your opponent. And by the time you know it, like, the locations just keep on changing. You get me to get bad. The, the, there's more lights. There's more, like, media obligations and things yeah, like that. And yeah. By the time you know it, you're already here. You, like, you get a sort of wall. You don't even, you don't, you almost don't even notice it. So the, the difference between fighting and, say, a, a local community hall versus yeah. an arena you just the laser focus yeah it's just it's not that much of a difference for you really not that much of a difference wow well, obviously obviously now it's like you can see like the jump now from obviously last time where we were but um yeah it's gets yeah, it's, it's cool we actually stop and then look for a minute you know what i mean yeah yeah sometimes maybe when fighters fight in big arenas they're going to a different city yeah but being from dublin um and fighting in your first arena in your home city yeah does that make it extra special do you do you get slightly anxious coming out but for the fact that probably all your friends and family are there yeah um yeah like like i said like obviously i'm from dublin yeah i live in dublin so um a lot of the times when we come in here for Concerts to see whatever Drake is here or yeah, yeah. whoever is here. So, um, KDA you, West or have you been to another MMA event here as a fan? Um, yeah, even Battle Tours. I've been to Battle Tours here. Oh, I think I was here the UFC Wayans when they're here. Like, I think the last time they were here years ago, yeah, I was there for the Wayans. And, um, yeah, obviously, to be in a place that I've obviously been a spectator so many times, that is like it's yeah, it's cool. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 So what what is your what's your long term goal uh, in this game of MMA? Obviously, everyone's objective. Uh, most people, ninety percent of the people's objective is um, obviously to make um, a living out of this. Obviously, um, I, I feel like you're yeah. not. You're like it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's pretty you're you're obvious, not. You're yeah. not a journeyman. Like yeah. you're, you're here to you're here to take care of business yeah. and reach the top. But, can, you, can you just kind of describe though how you see it playing out? Um, do you do you think about that? Yeah, hundred percent. I want to, like, I want to prove to myself, like that, like, um, and I want to go for. It. I want to try be a world champion. I want to be the best featherweight in, in, on the planet. Like, I and I and I believe that that can happen. And um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm trying to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so people would think. I know a lot of people would think like, oh man, the, like when see when people are watching the UFC, they're like, oh that guy is a bit. Yeah, you know I mean, like, but I'm. Like, I'm not thinking that they're shit, but like, I'm thinking that, like, <laughs> obviously, I'm thinking that, like, man, I could, I could, I feel like I could do good against that guy and do beat him, you know what I mean? So, I'm just, I just want to prove to myself that I can do it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I, I, I don't think I am, but maybe I'm wrong, but we're going to find out and I'm going to make, make sure we find out, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously, um, yeah, hopefully we can. We can do this again. You seen me from you seen me from fighting in um fields <laughs> to fighting in the tree arena. So like it's um obviously it's cool to see the journey and um obviously from here I wanna just keep taking yeah. it up and up and up and up to, to world title level and um I feel like that'll happen so like hopefully like you you will you will see that happen as well. So you'll be here for that <laughs> when the when the world title's here. We'll have a world title on the desk there and uh yeah i like that yeah. i like that yeah <laughs> and uh i remember actually we were in the back of that truck remember in uh in the cage conflict yeah that was that was so crazy i mean 
it's, like that was such a long wait that day. Like, people yeah. don't, I don't think people realize like because that was like six hours waiting. Yeah, and you, and you had a like, there was a it must five, have been like twelve in the morning or one in the morning or something was it? Yeah, that was actually epic. Yeah, the cage conflict up in Belfast. Um, yeah, the the way the cage was set up in the top. And, yeah, it was yeah. it was a mad uh, it was a mad set up. But um, yeah, that was uh, that was proper. A pressure situation wasn't it because like yeah. every five minutes that someone's coming in like oh you're open five minutes you're open 20 minutes you're getting warm then you're, you have to get cold again because it's getting delayed and yeah like i feel like for them create mad shows like that in the gal halls and things like that <laughs> i feel like they're almost more um nerve-wracking than a battle tour because a battle tour now everything's so organized yeah. you have your time yeah and then that's that's you because they can't not like because you're on tv you now they have certain times that you have to be on and yeah. they have to stick to them so uh yeah it's definitely more um obviously them experience helped me now like well uh cheers kenny um cheers. looking forward to the fight um no doubt you'll you'll be victorious um i'm just kind of looking forward to see the advancements to the game that you're doing and um yeah best of luck um obviously i don't think you need it i mean uh, thanks it's very from seeing your training today like it looks like you're very much on course they another victory so good man thank thanks. you thanks everyone.